as use uh, root user. I'm going to cd back to LFS. I'm going to make a or an LALFS directory and change into it. Now, if I go to the um, ALFS homepage, um, ALFS. It gives you the address to fetch the um, the actual scripts to run JHALFS, and all we do is you literally type that command inside a directory, and it downloads it for you. So that's another reason why we need Git, actually, um, not only during the JHALFS to fetch it as well. Um, however, I've got a version that I zipped up when I was testing this because I didn't want there to be any changes that might affect my um, video, uh, might you know, put me off, something's changed or a bug's introduced or something's fixed or something and calls um, you know, the process of going through to behave slightly differently. So what I've done is I've already got this hopefully as a tarball. Uh, yeah, there it is there. So I'm going to extract that here. But otherwise, just running that command will would create exactly the same thing as what you see here. So what I would have done is created inside this ALFS directory, created a JH ALFS directory, gone into that directory, run this command, and then the result of that command is what you can see there. That's that's what would have happened. So that's that. Right, so let's go back here. Probably don't need this for a moment now. Um, so what I need to do now is to run make. And I'm not going to go through all the options here. I've, I have got a set of videos um, specifically about running ALFS. goes into a little bit more detail. Um, so again, what I've got is a configuration file that I've already created, if I can find that. Um, Right, is that the one there, July the 1st? I think that's it. Yeah, it is. So I'm just going to copy this configuration file into the JHALFS. It's got all the settings that I want to use. Oops. So there it is there. So if I now run make, um, you can see it's got things that I've already set up. Um, I'll quickly go through what I have set up using default system V or system five version. Um, I want to use a branch version, which is 12.1 latest stable version, just a standard build. Apparently this can build multi-lib. I didn't know that. Um, I've change this to add BLFS tool support and then selected all the dependencies. So these are all the extra top level uh, packages that are going to be built and it ferrets out all the dependencies that they need as well. So they get built as part of it. Again, BLFS book version, use the um, a commit version. And again, it's 12.1 that I want to use. Uh, don't change any of these. Um, I've selected retrieve source files, so I need to do this stuff on the um, file system. I need to create a source archive environment variable, point that to a new directory with all the packages on, 
um, I've told it to use all the cores available on the processor to run the test suites, but only for the final system, the critical test suite. So that's basically the tool chain. I don't want the full lot run, otherwise it'll just take too long. I've also asked for a log that can be useful. You can tail the progress of each package uh, in another screen. I can show you that. I've told it to strip the installed binaries and libraries. Um, now, I did ask it to build a kernel and I supplied the config file that was valid. There was nothing wrong with it. And it kept on coming up with an error during the make old config part of the script when it was running that. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, deselect that this time. I don't want it to fail. Um, so I'm going to have to build the kernel manually and then obviously install it manually. So I'm not sure why that is. That could be maybe possibly something to do with one of these other packages that I haven't installed. I don't know. Um, but that was the only problem I had. I, I didn't spend too much time finding out why it wasn't building. Um, but I decided it's probably just simpler and quicker to build it manually rather than try and work out what I was doing wrong. Um, I've selected that. I've changed that to my locale and that the language as well. Same thing with that for the page size for Groff. Um, giving it a host name. Same thing with network configuration. It's basically the same as what I'm using now because it's the same machine. And console configuration. I've set some things up here. I think I think that's the default. That one I've changed from US to UK. And that one I think defaulted to 4, I think. Um, that should be set. Unset that one because it is actually UTC it's set to. And default log level, yeah, I've set to three. So that's all I've... Oh, I'll create an SBU and this usage report. That could be useful to examine afterwards. Um, but other than that, that's all I've changed. So if I press um, escape, uh, this won't actually work at the moment because I haven't set the source archive or even created it or anything so i'm going to do save yes out uh, and in fact it's already found it that it can't it can't find the location so that's all right that hasn't carried on so what i'm going to do now is i'll add this to the root login actually um, um so this is dot bash underscore profile I'm going to add in here export source archive equals let's put this in quotes dollar LFS forward slash ALFS forward slash and I'll call it source archive just keep it simple so if I source that now Echo it. Okay, I've spelled it wrong as well. Uh, right, let's put a source archive. Right, resource that. That's better. So if I now make that directory. and change into it. Uh, okay. And what I'm going to do now is to extract all of the packages from LFS prep LFS packages .tar. So they're in a the subdirectory. So what I need to do is to move LFS packages start into here and then remove that directory. And that should be it. Um, now, normally, as I say, I would normally build a kernel automatically. Um, I guess I could do that. A copy from LFS. Um, Is it there? Is it config? Yeah. And I need to put that into 
the source archive location and call it config dash six dot seven dot four. Like I say, it won't be used, but normally that's what I'll do. Now I need to change the ownership of um, all of the contents of the ALFS directory to kernel text because we've got to run it as a normal user. And I guess what I should also do is to set these settings I've got in my bash profile. The same for the um, kernel text user. So if I come out of that, Um, normally, Dev scripts to set this up automatically from a common value in etc. But um, obviously, this is just a one-off, so there's no real point in going to that effort. So, in fact, what I'll do here is just copy this lot. Um, to be quite honest, don't really need make flags now at all, either on root or kernel text, because everything's set inside JLFS as a configuration. Um, so it's not going to use this at all. It will use the settings that are set inside the configuration of JLFS, JHLFS. So the others could put, well, yeah, definitely PS1, LFS might be used, probably will be used actually as will source archive. So let's just copy them all in anyway. And if I do source, Okay, so arguably because I've put this shortcut in here, I haven't had to worry about changing that character. So maybe it was a better deal in the end doing that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to go back to the JH ALFS directory. So I need to CD into LFS. ALFS, JH ALFS, rerun make, and then I don't need to change any settings, I just press Q uh, because I've got nothing to save. Do you want to run JH ALFS? Yes, I just press enter and oh, right, okay, I've put the archive into the wrong place, so uh, let's become root. And CD LFS ALFS. Oh. CD source archive. Okay, yes, yeah, so I need to make the packages. And copy everything into packages, but anything normally this wouldn't matter. Well, this doesn't matter this time, but uh, because I'm not building kernel, but normally it would do because the kernel config's got me in a specific place and I've just moved it there. Config, I've got to move it back to here because that's where it expects to see that. Uh, oh, did I move? Oh, I didn't move them, I copied them. Right, okay, so that's, that still needs that kernel to move back. Pictures config. Oh, right, yeah, I've done that wrong as well now. Config has got to go into this directory. Right, that's better. So, yeah, I've got the config there where I'd expect to see it. And inside packages I've got all the archives of the packages so all I'm going to do is to run a churn kernel text again because I don't know if you noticed the packages directory is owned by root so to be on the safe side I'll just run the churn command again on the LFS tree and 
come back out as kernel text, rerun make, quit, do I want to run it? Yes. Okay, so now everything's passed. All the parameters that I've set are been picked out and they're confirmed here. Are you happy with the settings? Yes. So what it's now doing is going to the internet to fetch the LFS book. And as I say, it still seems to want to connect, even if you tell it that uh, the location of the book. So I'm not sure if there's something I've done wrong or something extra I need to do, but um, yeah, I don't know. But certainly the packages, if the packages exist, it finds them as it's doing here and just copies them to the correct location. That but it seems to work fine without going to the internet. So now it's fetching the BLFS stuff and looks like it's processing the BLFS book. So this takes a little bit longer because the BLFS book is obviously a lot, lot bigger. Okay, so what it's doing now is it's fetching the um, packages required for the BLFS part. Um, I can't remember if it's actually should have failed by now, but due to the kernel version um, problem that I mentioned before. Um, but I've just found in my notes the error that comes up. It says value too great for base. Error token is 4 underscore E7500. So that's the error that's caused when it's checking the kernel version. So as I say, I'm not sure if it's after it's done this bit, just before it runs, or if it's in the actual bit where you start the execution. Um, but we'll see. Oh yeah, I think it might be this bit actually. Yeah, there it is there, yeah. So there is the, the error value. This value here is too great for the base. So it's, it's, as I understand it, it's taking this as a number four times 10 to the power of 7,500, which is, as you can imagine would be an astronomical number. Um, so what I did to fix this, um, rather than recompile the kernel, with the new um, suffix uh, as part of the um, kernel version. What I did, I went into this script and just modified it. And it was on line 66. So it's this line here, see what it does. It gets the major minor revision numbers of the kernel and it looks like it's computing or converting it to value, or getting the value. Um, 
So for the revision part of it, what I did was I modified it so that it echoes this value. Um, so I'll put this in uh, the dollar bracket to execute a command and the command is echo. So I'll get it to echo the value that it's trying to evaluate and then pipe that through TR to translate the underscore into a hyphen. Um, and in my notes I've left out the close bracket of the revision so it should be there I would have thought echo uh, sorry that should be a bar there as well so what happens is it takes that value it doesn't like with the underscore and anytime it finds an underscore in the string it'll convert it into a hyphen um, and that should fix it and then the output, basically that command there, the output of that command is what gets put into revision. So I'll save that and I'll have to rerun JHALFS quit. Yes, I do want to run it. They look good. Yes, I do want to run the rest of it because I'm happy with those settings. So it should be quicker this time because it's downloaded everything. It's generated some books and things. Uh, XML and things, so I shouldn't need to do too much more. In fact, like I say, I should uh, be doing a lot less. It's just the XML part that seems to take a while. It's just running on one core, unfortunately. Okay, yeah, you can see it's completed correctly that time. One problem I had with that fix was that is a function that's used in several places. I tried to hard code uh, a value into there, but then it caused problems with others. So using that translate command, it means that it can still work with any other call. So it's used for all these other functions as well. Um, so despite the fact that it's picked up the underscore there it does work because it's only at that point that the underscore gets translated when it's reading the kernel version um, but as you can see it's worked the rest of it so that's the preparation the configuration if you like um, of the jh alfs system what it's done now is if we go into the lfs directory so this this is the root of our new system what will be the root of our new system you can see what it's done now is it's created a JLFS direct, JHALFS directory um, and it looks like it's also created this sources directory as well as well as a var directory. 